You are sailing across the ocean facing waves of monsters and extreme weather that are furiously crashing into your ship, threatening to devour everything in their path. Here hundreds if not thousands of sailors on these ships are at constant risk, not to mention the 60 to 90 aircraft parked on a navy carrier which alone could be worth over 10 billion dollars. This is the reality faced by all US Navy ships in the open ocean, sailing through violent storms, battling unpredictable typhoons and deadly typhoons that can appear unannounced on the horizon, how will these ships weather a huge storm with waves of monsters? It goes without saying that life in the middle of the vast ocean is always at risk. The actual sea conditions are very different there compared to the safe harbor environment we have experienced when maneuvering ships. There are one of several factors that make it that much more dangerous for US Navy sailors who are often on long missions lasting months. And as we know, wind is the driving force behind weather at sea. They create ocean currents which determine how violent the weather can become. Roughly speaking, ships can deal with high-speed winds that can reach over 60 knots, nearly 70 miles per hour, and waves that can reach heights of up to 300 feet during hurricanes and typhoons, high enough to devour a ship terrible, right? And as might be expected, these gigantic waves exert considerable forces on the structure of US Navy ships, which can affect their maneuverability, making it difficult to maintain a steady course, which will inevitably increase the risk of capsizing. In addition, the safety of thousands of crew members is also at risk. An unstable ship will cause the heavy equipment and machinery on board to shift, which in turn will cause injury to the crew and damage to the ship itself. It is noted that every day about 50,000 US Navy sailors are stationed around the world on board one of about 100 ships. It shows how important it is to keep everyone safe there. While the US Navy has put in place some of the best measures to prevent accidents, sometimes, though rarely, it's tough enough to go against Mother Earth. One such incident occurred on October 1, 2015, when the SS El Faro was lost at sea with its entire crew of 33 after sailing inside the sun wall from Hurricane Joaquin. An extensive search and rescue operation was carried out, but no crew members were found alive and the ship was also not found fortunately since tragic incidents like the loss of El Faro, the Navy has drastically improved ship safety through stricter protocols, advanced engineering and the latest designs. But will it be enough when the great storm appears again, engineering and design before we get into the details of all the incredible engineering technologies and advanced engineering that help these ships weather the harsh weather, let me ask you one question. Have you ever tried balancing a pencil on your fingertips? Imagine trying that while riding a roller coaster. It's a glimpse into the physics and engineering gameplay of the Navy that keeps ships afloat through the churning sea. Let's take a look at the critical elements that keep US Navy ships afloat, essentially preventing them from capsizing. According to a basic rule of science, objects float when they have a lower average density than water. Likewise ships float because they have a lower density than water. Consequently, the downward force of gravity is less than the upward force exerted by the water point. One other point to note is that the lower the center of gravity, the less likely it is for an object to tip over. Therefore, a low center of gravity is maintained by all US Navy ships by placing heavy equipment, tools, and fuel at lower levels of the ship. Actually, the placement of all equipment and installation of new machinery is carefully calculated by the engineers on board taking into account the stability of the ship, the next major player is hull structure and design. The massive U-shape of the hull is designed to provide stability, resisting drag, tilt, and rolling through rough seas. However, larger US Navy ships such as aircraft carriers have a V-shaped hull that can ride large waves. Unlike smaller ships which are heavily affected by wave height. Also, the US Navy's aircraft carrier, to be more specific, rely on various other techniques such as the ballast system to help them maintain balance to IT works like a scale in Lady Justice's hands, in other words, the crew can raise or lower the ship's center of gravity, controlling buoyancy, and keeping it stable. Advanced technology apart from these fundamental designs and systems, the US Navy has also incorporated several advanced technologies into its ships to ensure their safety in harsh weather conditions. At the top of the list is the fin stabilizer, the fighter jet at sea. Most modern ships now use these adjustable wings which work similarly to the ailerons in an airplane. On US Navy ships, stabilizer fins are critical to maintaining stability in rough seas and maximizing the effectiveness of weapon systems. As the Navy conducted long-lasting missions at sea while carrying out precision strikes and strikes, stabilizer fins became an operational necessity. 
They neutralize roll motion and allow ships to stabilize their platforms even in bad weather, without stabilizer fins, it would be nearly impossible to carry out long missile attacks and bomb attacks in unsettled seas. Fin stabilizers turn a potentially unstable vessel into a warship capable of being accurate and coordinated in challenging sea conditions. They are an important technology that helps the Navy adhere to its model of safeguarding the freedom of the seas around the world. Gyroscopic stabilizers are another example of new advances in marine engineering. They work like bicycle wheels. As long as the wheel is rotating, the bicycle will remain upright. Likewise, the gyroscopic stabilizer consists of an enclosed vacuum ball with a flywheel inside which is designed to rotate at a high speed of around 10,700 rpm. This flywheel rotation creates angular momentum which in turn generates torque. This torque essentially pushes and pulls the ship to keep it as level as possible, the interesting thing is that it can be operated via a computer-controlled system. It constantly adjusts the gyro's attitude or tilt, allowing it to provide full torque in a variety of marine conditions. Furthermore, to reduce the damage from a potential capsizing event, self-returning vessels are being developed more and more. Yes, ships that can operate themselves after capsizing. Technology like this could be invaluable to the US Navy, enabling small vessels such as inflatable boats or ribs to quickly return to service after a sudden capsize in rough seas. Self returning vehicles often have a quill weighted keel, lower ballast tanks, or inclined hull, which provides a return moment once the ship passes a certain angle. Upon detection of capsizing, onboard computers can immediately activate pumps to move water between tanks, providing assistance to the natural return process, maintenance and inspection with all of these advanced systems in place, maintaining and inspecting them regularly is a top priority for US Navy crews. As expected, warships must remain operational 24-7 to carry out all their functions with a high degree of perfection. Therefore, Proper maintenance of the ship is important in order to identify and address problems that could potentially become hazardous in the future, this requires a highly skilled and dedicated team of seafarers and engineers to perform tasks such as cleaning, painting, repairing and upgrading the ship. These maintenance tasks fall into two main categories, namely preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance, preventive maintenance is about always being one step ahead of problems. This is also known as planned maintenance system. Machine lubrication, fluid level correction, functional tests, performing visual inspections, and vibration measurements are some of the foundations of preventive maintenance. In short, preventive maintenance ensures that every nut and bolt is in place properly. On the other hand, corrective maintenance is used when a ship experiences failure, dysfunction, or damage. It basically covers the repair and restoration of equipment on board. Bear in mind that ships are undoubtedly expensive to operate but their costs can skyrocket if there is an equipment breakdown at sea that requires emergency repairs. Therefore, preventive maintenance helps keep operating costs under control while reducing the risk of equipment damage that could lead to capsizing. Apart from these procedures, dry docking and overhaul maintenance are also carried out. Their understanding is that dry docking lifts submerged parts such as the hull, propellers, and rudders. Meanwhile, overhaul maintenance involves disassembling, inspecting, repairing, and reassembling various ship systems. Every system on a U.S. Navy ship must be in tip-top shape to withstand an unexpected storm. Abandonment means risk at sea and no room for surprises there. Weather forecasts speaking of surprises, the U.S. Navy is working relentlessly to avoid encounters with harsh weather conditions, staying away from routes that could be affected by hurricanes or typhoons. It's no surprise that the weather at sea can be so unpredictable, which is why forecasting is so important during maritime operations. Advanced weather forecasting systems and real-time monitoring help U.S. Navy cruise plan routes and deal with harsh weather conditions. Let's take a brief look at the U.S. Navy's sophisticated and complex weather forecasting systems that help their ships navigate the rough seas safely. When we talk about tracking weather conditions across the oceans, satellites play an important role. There are special meteorological and weather tracking satellites that orbit around Earth's poles. They are responsible for gathering information on clouds, air and water temperatures, currents, dust storms, and ice coverage, enabling U.S. Navy crews to monitor weather patterns over a wide area. Weather Boya is the most common type of forecasting tool used by the U.S. Navy. Currently, there are more than 1,000 boys around the world who greatly assist the Navy in planning their routes on the high seas. This boy can measure wind speed, waves, atmospheric pressure, and air and sea temperature. 
The data collected can then be used to determine the formation or dissolution of typhoons, the extent of wind circulation, and the location of a center. In addition, the U.S. Navy is equipped with powerful environmental models such as the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and Wave Watch 3. These models use data from satellites, BOIA, weather stations, and other sources to create an accurate representation of the environment. In addition to these external sources, all U.S. Navy ships are equipped with a variety of onboard weather forecasting tools, including an anemometer to measure wind speed, a barometer to measure atmospheric pressure, and a weather radar to detect storms and precipitation. Based on these predictable weather forecasts, the U.S. Navy's advanced navigation systems allow ships to optimize their routes. Vessels can plan alternative routes to avoid areas with high waves, strong currents, or bad weather which could cause the ship to become unstable or even cause it to capsize. Don't forget that it's not just about avoiding waves, the Navy's navigation system also allows ships to calculate optimal speed and course to minimize the effects of rough seas. Finally, we want to thank you for your concern. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos about the US Navy and its operations. Click the bell icon to keep getting the latest content updates from us. See you next time.